Tube, it's Amber with the Digi Stitchery, and this is Floss Tube number five. Today we are breaking out all of my projects. We're going to do a full whip parade, uh, so you better get a snack, get a drink, get cozy. It's going to be a while. Um, we're also going to do an Autumn Series sneak peek. Uh, we're going to announce the winners of last week's giveaway so floss tube number four is giveaway and we're gonna have a new giveaway this week so stay tuned <laughs> you know, let's just do it. Let's just pull the trigger, pull out all of my projects, and we're going to do a full whip parade. Uh, before we do that, though, I want to show you, I actually got one finish done uh, since the last time we saw each other. So it is Summer, Stitching the Seasons Summer by the Housewives, and it turned out awesome. I am so excited for this, um, the way the colors turned out, everything. Uh, this was stitched on 14 count parchment and I know exactly how I'm gonna finish it and I will have that for you on the next floss tube. But yeah, everything turned out great. The only thing I left out were the French knots because I just wasn't feeling it. <laughs> I wanted it done and I think it looks cute without it, so. There you go. There is my one finish. So, all right, let's get back to this or get started with the whip parade. We haven't even started yet. Um, so my table is completely full here. Um, and we're just gonna go through everything. I pulled projects out. I spent quite a bit of time yesterday. I have projects in like a little basket right by our chair here in our living room. Um, I also had some projects in my quilting office room, um, just stacked. And then I had some in a shelf, like packed away in a, in a, sh in my, uh, display case in my, in my office. So, um, not sure what some of these are. So we'll be surprised together. How about that? Um, let's see, before we get started here, just one thing, my daughter, she is away, uh, spending time with her grandparents in Florida, and today is actually a very big day in the Williams household. It is our dog, Ernest's first birthday. Um, my daughter wanted me to make sure to wish him a happy birthday on Floss Tube. Uh, and <laughs> wanted you guys to wish him a happy birthday as well, since she is not here to celebrate on his big day. We will do a FaceTime later with some treats, but um, just wish wish Ernest a happy birthday. I'll post a picture of him with his treat towards the end of the video. But uh, yeah, so happy birthday, Ernie. Uh, all right, so whip parade. Let's get it going. Um, I am a huge, huge fan, probably an addict, yeah, I'm an addict, of the mesh bags. So you're gonna see like all mesh bags, pretty much. I think I have all of them that Fat Quarter Shop has, except for maybe 30? I know, three that I haven't bought. Um, so you're gonna see the majority of them. I do have some downstairs that are not filled yet. Um, they have potential projects with autumn series in it. So, um, you will see those later, but okay. So we're going to get started here. All right. So my first whip is glitter village. <laughs> I've been working on this forever guys. Like it's seriously, it's sad and I haven't picked it up in forever, but I love it. Um, I am working on Glitter House number one right now, which actually isn't the first one. I, I started in the middle since I'm that middle starter. Um, let me remove these clover clips. I use the clover clips to push back all my fabric and they're great. Um, okay. Oh. Okay. This isn't bad. I, 
Glitter House One's my my fourth house. So here is Glitter Village. And I am stitching this on minty opalescent, uh, 16 count, 16 count minty opalescent. And I did switch up the colors just to make it pop off more on the mint. I, I, I think I changed lettuce and a few other colors, but yeah. And I switched it around to do like a darker pink on the houses. My One of my favorite pinks of Classic Color Works is Persimmon, and you can see that is beautifully displayed here in these houses. So, working on house number one here. I've got the church done, and then that glitter house two and seven, I think. So, Ooh, I need to get back to this. It is, it does look good. Man, I like that. Okay, so that was Glitter Village. And I have it in my charcoal gingham mesh bag. <laughs> you guys are going to get tired of seeing mesh bags here, I know. I do make my own bags. I have a few of those, and I'll show those in another floss too. But um, we'll keep going here. This one is in my aqua bag. Um, this is, I'm going to butcher this, and I'm so sorry, the Crochet Go Go, um, the Pledge of Allegiance. And I started this last spring, I think. So let's see here. And I picked my own colors for this one. Here is what I've got so far. Not bad. It's looking really, really good. Um, I believe this is 16 count platinum. And man, yeah, the colors are awesome on this. It pops. What I did was last year, um, more around Memorial Day time, I purchased from Southern Stitching Company. I believe they're out of South Carolina. They had a floss pack, like a patriotic floss pack, that um, the proceeds went to. Um, the proceeds went to the Gary Sinise Foundation for veterans and great foundation. I was so happy to contribute to it. Uh, these colors, though, are amazing. I had never worked with these colors before. And they look great. Um, Wavy Navy was one of them, was the darker one. I had never seen that before. And I've actually incorporated that more in my stitching um, since I found that. And then that darker red, let me find it because it's really pretty. Sorry, guys. Bandana. Okay. Bandana is the darker red very very cool and the the uh modeling no that's not modeling the gradient the variegation there we go thank you <laughs> variegation uh looks great with the bandana so that is the pledge of allegiance All right, next one. All right, I had been eyeballing this one forever. And I attended my first retreat ever, which was actually a virtual retreat. It was uh, the Jingle Ball last December. And I was in a chat room with, or a video chat, with uh, some Midwest stitchers and one of the stitchers had just finished this and I was asking all sorts of questions because it was so pretty what she did. This is, I don't have a good picture of it because I just printed it. It was a PDF, but it is Frosted Pumpkin Stitcheries Christmas Wreath. And oh, let me just show you. Okay. So 
I started this in December. So if you haven't seen it, it's got the gingerbread house and then all around it is a wreath made up of ornaments, cookies, candy canes, all sorts of stuff. It is so stinking cool. And this stitcher who had finished it, she showed her finished piece and she did, she finished it up in a pillow. Oh my gosh, it was so pretty. So since they were, uh, Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery was a uh, participant in the Jingle Ball, I had to get the pattern and I had to start it immediately. So this is stitched on 16 count Snow on Aqua. And I picked my own colors. I wanted it kind of a little bit more classic color-y, not super, super bright. Because for my Christmas decor, I'm very traditional um, with the bright red, the green, different shades of green. Um, yeah, not the super, super bright. So that is Christmas wreath by Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery in my Valentine's Day mesh bag. <laughs> um, okay, so next one. Who loves the Let's Talk series? Let's Talk Chalk. Chalk Talk by Hands On Design. Who has done all of them? I, I've almost done all of them. I am, I've got this one and then Summer to do. And then I've done the entire thing. So she needs to make some more. Kathy, if you're watching or you know someone is, who knows Kathy, tell her more chalk talk, please. So this one is, sorry for the glare. This one is, uh, let's talk quilting. And I finished prior to this, I finished the let's talk cross stitch one. Um, and I chose colors that matched my office because I want to, I wanted to stitch both, frame them and hang them together. So I took the same colors that I used for Let's Talk Cross Stitch, which is finished, but not finished, fully finished. So I should show those too. I've got a few of those. <laughs> Um, so I took the same colors. I stitched it on 14, 14 or 16. I can't tell. Um, chalkboard black and it's looking good. Love the greens. It's just, I don't know what it is. It's just taking forever for me to get it done. I should, it go, words go fast. We know this by now. So yeah. So let's talk chalk quilting in the confetti mesh bag from Stitch Quarterly of last summer. I think last summer. Yeah. Okay. No, summer before. Summer before last. All right. This next one is another hands-on design, and I don't have I don't have a printed copy because. I just have the pattern in here, but it is season two. So here's season one. Season, stitch the, stitching the seasons or stitch the, I don't remember. This is June for season one. So here is, it's upside down, June of season two. So I've started it. Um, I like giving myself assignments. Usually I'm pretty, pretty good about like, okay, if I know this needs to be up for January, I start stitching it in December, um, knowing that I have to get it finished before January, January, so I can display it with all the craziness that my May brought us, uh, June didn't get done. So I'm a little behind on season two, but nevertheless, it looks good. Um, uh, the only color change that I did on this one was I used Field of Greens for the uh, strawberry leaves, just to see. I hadn't used it um, 
yet. At this point, I hadn't used it yet at all on anything. Um, now I have since used it on um, the Polar Plunge Ornament Series, but um, I just wanted to see what it looks like and it looks pretty cool. This, this is stitched on, this entire series is gonna be stitched on 16 count platinum. So there you go in my red flat bag. All right, um, next is Let's Go Ride a Bike Pumpkin Patch. I wanna say this is September's Let's Go Ride a Bike. Sorry for the glare. I think it is, and it is in my anchor mesh bag. All right, so small start. I did, I started this when my daughter was at State Archery in Branson, Missouri. Um, my daughter and my husband love to go to this 80s arcade where they have pinball machines and like every video game, arcade game you could think of from the 80s. Um, they love to go to it. I can take like a few minutes of it and then I'm good. So I went back to the car and started stitching through on a podcast. So I was good to go for a long time actually. So um, here is my start. Uh, it's stitched on 14 count chalkboard black. Um, I think I'm pretty sure I did the call for colors on this one, but actually let me see. I might have changed one now that I'm thinking about it. Yep, I did. Okay, so really tealy is great, but I found a, about a couple years ago tartan plaid, and I love it for fall. Like, it's my fall teal, and it looks great. It looks super bluey, greeny, turquoisey on the chalkboard black. Um, so that is what I did the bike with. So, yeah, small start. Looks cool. Oh, there's leaves on the handles. That's cool. Okay. I need to get back to this. <laughs> to put it on my bike on a bike finish, right? Okay. That one's done. The next, moving on, this is a kitted piece. I just haven't put a stitch in it, so it's ready to go. It's in my autumn mesh bag with needle minder. <laughs> um, this is Wally the Walrus uh, for the Polar Plunge Ornament Series by Hands On Design. And I am stitching it on my fabric. 16 count Caribbean Waterfall. So I did the Polar Bear, Polar Bear Peak, finished that guy up, now I'm moving on to the walrus. So I will get started on that, hopefully soon. Actually, I think this is probably gonna be a Christmas in July, so you'll see this guy again. Um, that's gonna be another another stitch. Okay, um, all right, this one in the orange mesh bag, <laughs> uh, we are doing Home Sweet Haunted Home by Primrose Cottage Stitches. And I got a little bit further um, stitching it in the cauldron. I got some details in the house and the roof done and some more lettering done. And that moon looks good on the purple. So, so far, so good. I'm liking it. Um, I haven't quite gotten to the house. I know last Foss Tube I said I was thinking about switching it to Baking Tin. I'm still planning on that. Um, so hopefully next Foss Tube I have, have some more progress on there to show you what that's gonna look like. So, okay. And sticking with Halloween, my next one in the purple mesh bag is Halloween Letters by Primrose Cottage Stitches. 
and this is stitched on 14 count gone batty gray and I've gotten a little bit more done um I was just curious just trying out the co the colors I had picked and the purple's looking good the orange is looking good and then this yellow is actually cottage daisies by classic color works it's that new yellow that they have and I really like it it's bright it's and it's it's not that golden like queen bee honeycomb, honeycomb color at all. Um, I really like it with this color combo that that I have going on. So gone batty gray. Halloween letters. All right, and then next in the sunflower bag, I have the black crow. Sorry, let me take my needle out here. I was working on this last night. Um, the Black Crow by Tiny Modernist. And I've gotten quite a bit more done since I last saw you guys. Um, this is on 16 count Rorschach test. Um, I got my crow for the most part done. Um, and then I started in on adding some of the lobster claw color that I'm using for uh, in replacement of the orange DMC. So starting to look pretty cool. Um, I like how he turned out. Yeah, I'm, I'm anxious to see what the yellow is going to look like and then the, the teal that I've added on here. So that was Black Crow by Tiny Modernist. Okay, and then this one, I'm going to skip and I'm going to show last. So, all right, this one here now, back to it. Uh, this was Christmas Mesh with Manita Minder, Rudolph. So, I can assume this is a Christmas stitch. Ooh, and it is. All right, this is by Shannon Christine, Candy Canes. And I am stitching this on 16 count farmhouse wood. So the Digi Stitcheries fabric, farmhouse wood, 16 count. So gotten a little bit further, not much though. So I think this will be, I may, if I can't get to it here in June, it'll definitely be something that I work on uh, for July, Christmas in July. So looking good. Um, I did get June's uh, pattern in the club that I'm in and it is Christmas tree lot and it's so cute. The Christmas trees are like a buffalo plaid and they look really cool. So I'm excited to add that to the list of stitching. Um, okay. Oh, non-mesh bag. Here we go from a spring stitch quarterly. So what do we got in here? Ah, okay. So I don't have a printed out pattern, but I can show you what it is. Um, it is Lucky Star Stitches Be Mine. And I am stitching this on 16 count Icelandic gray. This is the same uh, stitching or excuse me, designer who did um, the Happy Halloween that I did on um, Howl at the Moon. So same beautiful typography. It's so pretty. Um, I picked my own colors on this one um, just to mix it up a little bit. Um, I actually did a stitch with a lot of these colors. I did a frosted pumpkin stitchery um, for my daughter. It's a dog. It's a dog in a, a winter scene. Um, I made the dog look like our dog Ernest. So I really liked the colors for that. Um, so I used the same ones here. So be mine. Stitched on 16 count Icelandic gray by Lucky Star Stitches. Okay, another Christmas one in. 
this mesh bag. I'm not sure what the theme was for this one. This is going to be hands-on design flamingo bells. And I am stitching this on my fabric and it is 16 count opalescent. So I know the last time I showed you, I think it looked like this because I hadn't gotten any further. So <laughs> flamingo body, um, I did add, I picked my own colors for, for this. Um, I think I did, I pulled Cosmo floss. Uh, their pinks are just so pretty. And I know I've talked about the teals before, the Cosmo teals. Again, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And I love the color, uh, this oyster opalescent, very pretty. And it, the glitter just stands out and goes well with my flamingo, what I have of him. So, all right. I think, is that? No, it's not. I'm not done with Christmas yet. There's still more, but okay. So this is in the, the Valentine's. No, this was last year's. Fundraiser. I can't think of it. Uh, fundraiser for quilting and cross stitch at Fat Quarter Shop. So let me pull this out. Oh, okay. So this is, I don't have the pattern to show you because I just printed it, printed the pattern itself. It was a PDF. This is the Valentine's Day vi uh, Town by Stitching with the Housewives. And this is the, I can tell you here, Kissing Booth. It's the Kissing Booth. So I have the house here, haven't gotten to the booth yet. But um, I stitched this on my fabric, which is, this is gonna be a 14 count opalescent ambrosia. So a very light pink. You can see the modeling in the ambrosia. The opalescent makes it pop just a little bit more. And all of my colors are working very well on this one. Um, I did pull my own colors for this. Um, just to mix it up a little bit. So, Valentine's Village Town um, by Stitching with the Housewives. Okay. So, this is another Christmas one. <laughs> uh, in the Fall Buffalo Check Stitch Quarterly bag from last season, I think. Um, I, again, this was a PDF, so I don't have the pattern cover for you guys. Um, but it is Erin Elizabeth's Cozy Christmas. And it looks like a Scandinavian Christmas. Very cool. Um, I have got the trees done. I pulled my own colors for this. Um, I pulled mainly classic color works. Um, and I'm going to pull my colors out for you because these are really pretty together. Um, and so far, so good. Um, this is being stitched on 16 count Icelandic blue. And let me pull my colors because they are just so pretty. Oh, I've got a mix of classic color works and uh, color and cotton. So I am loving this. I really need to get back to it. But um, yeah, so this is Cozy Christmas, Erin Elizabeth, Scandinavian style uh, pattern. So, sorry, I should have printed that out for you guys. But, okay. So, and oh, have you guys seen the um, Tear Tray series by Erin Elizabeth? So stinking cute. Um, the England one, the Canadian one, um, the summer one. Wow, oof. That flamingo and like the bright things. I, I, I think it's going to have to be added to the list and can go with these guys. So, very cool. 
All right, um, this is in my Stitching with the Housewives bag. But it is not Stitching with the Housewives. Don't know why I did that. Uh, this is The Snowball by Brenda Gervais. And this is one, okay, I have tried. I bought hand-dyed fabric for this. It was so pretty. It was like uh, sagey green, but it was, it was so soft. Like I talked about in my first floss tube, it was so soft. It was falling out of my hands and I could not for the life of me stitch it. So it took quite, so I put it down and I found some fabric. I believe this is mist. You can get it at Hobby Lobby. It's that Artiste brand. Uh, this is 14 count mist. Um, haven't started anything yet, but I had, I had good intentions. Um, and I pulled my colors. So, um, I had originally put this together, but forgot about it. This is one that I found tucked on a shelf, put away. Um, I need to get back to it and maybe maybe switch up my fabric again because I think I have a fabric in this autumn series and perhaps winter green that's available in the basic color series um that will look really good with that so I need to get on this one so all right so second second to last one we're getting close guys 30 minutes in not as bad as I thought so all right so this one is going to be Flea Market Flowers by Lori Holt. I love it. It's beautiful. The colors, the colors are beautiful in this. All the called for. <sighs> Her color choices are amazing. I, let me tell you. All right, so this is in the green mesh bag. I actually have two projects in here and I'll explain why. Um, but first, let me show you Flea Market Flowers. Haven't gotten very far. It's been over a year. <laughs> Sorry, I got a clover clip in here. Um, this is on 16 count Icelandic gray. And that's what I have so far. Um, I did switch out the, you see some yellow and some orange here. I switched that out for a darker purple and a lighter purple. Um, I believe Plum Paisley, and then I picked just a DMC uh, purple to go with it. Um, I just kind of wanted more of a cooler look, and so far, loving it. It looks great. Oh, it, I think it goes this way. There we go. No, yes, no. Hold on. There we go. Like the pattern. There. Okay. We're good now. So, yep. Slowly but surely working on it. It'll get done. Hopefully in my lifetime. Hopefully. But, um, okay. So, the other project I have in here is actually a temperature chart. I loved the idea that, that Fat Quarter Shop had and many others that I researched and found had never heard of a temperature chart before they had announced that they were going to do theirs. So I, I wanted to do a different pattern. I thought it was a great idea to track the weather here. I'm doing Kansas city, Missouri, not the, not the suburb that I'm in, um, as a whole, but, um, I started searching all sorts of different pat patterns. And if you have not searched for temperature color chart patterns, you need to because there is such a huge variety and they're so cool. They're, they fit every different genre, taste, like everything. It's so cool. The one thing I knew that I wanted to do was I wanted to use the exact same floss that I am using for flea market flowers. So that's why it's here in this bag because all of my floss is together. Um, this is a bag that I actually made. Um, yeah, I love this. This is uh, Kate Spain fabric from 
many, many years ago, uh, but I love it. Um, so my temperature chart is very simple. It's a very simple uh, design. It's just a bunch of hearts. Um, it's a bunch of hearts that'll end up just being in a square. Um, so I'm using, like I said, the flea market flowers colors. I did end up pulling the yellow and the orange from from the called for pattern um, just to add a little bit more variety. Um, and I, this is all DMC. So the plump paisley that I had been using for uh, the flea market flower pattern, I switched out and I, I chose a couple of different purples. And then I think I had to go a little bit darker because here in Missouri, when I was planning this, we can get like super, super cold. So I needed more cooler colors. I needed to go maybe a little bit darker, like into browns maybe for like my super, super cold. Um, but here's what I have so far. Little behind. Really, we're in June. This should be half halfway done. But um, I stopped around my birthday, which is in April. So I have some catching up to do, so. Uh, this is being stitched on 14 count pale gray gingham. And I really like it. You can tell we've had a super mild winter and we had some hot days in spring. I'm curious to see as I start working on this again, I'm curious to see uh, what our colors are gonna change to because I know hotter I added more pinks and reds, sticking with her with Lori Holt's colors. So um, if you're interested in my chart here that I made, my color chart, let me know and I'll share it. Um, and I'll keep sharing this as I go. I really need to get caught up. That's probably something I need to work on this weekend because it's so easy. I You memorize it. patterns like this. You memorize like the heart, how many stitches and what you need to do. So I just need to sit down and do it. The hardest part is keeping track of like the temperature and all sorts of stuff. And as far as temperature, I am using the high for the day, not, not the average or the low. I'm doing the high. Um, when I first started it, I didn't really think that through. If I were to start it over now, I would do the average temperature of the day. That makes more sense now, but I'm so far gone on this. I'm, I'm too far in. I can't go back. So, um, four months in, so it's just going to have to be the max, but that's okay. You know, we'll deal with it. But, um, so that was... Flea market flowers and my temperature chart. So, all right. Well, I have one last whip here to show you, and I had to start it last night because I just couldn't contain myself. Um, <laughs> this is actually a start on are one of the fabrics from my uh, autumn series. So you're gonna get a little bit of a sneak peek here. Sorry, let me clear my table here. And this is, I'm gonna butcher this name and I'm so sorry. Jardin Priv Privé, Priv Privy. Uh, this is Halloween with the gnomes and this is so cute. When you actually get in here and you look at what these little gnomes are doing, it is adorable. Um, I took time yesterday. Um, I've never talked about this before. I cannot read a black and white chart to save my life. So what I have to do is I have to take the chart, the black and white chart, and I have to color it. Um, that is the only way I can read the chart. Um, 
Let me know if you do that too. I have a whole set of colored pencils dedicated to my cross stitching and my quilting patterns. Like I color everything and I make sure it's, I make sure everything's right. And plus it gives me time to actually look at the pattern and go, oh, this is what's going on. This is what the purpose was of that. You know, it makes sense. Um, it's also, I found a great way to, if you're wanting to change colors, um, it's a great way to experiment with it because if you're just coloring on paper and you mess up, you can just erase it or you can grab another piece of paper and start over. Um, so I found this really helps like coloring it in. But um, back to this, this is so stinking cute. He's painting the pumpkin's faces on here. Um, this guy's feeding the crows. It's just so cute. It's so stinking cute. So this is my first pattern by this designer. So I'm very excited. Um, okay, so you wanna see the fabric. You don't care about that. <laughs> uh, so this is an autumn, one of the autumn sneak peeks. This is taupe thought we needed another basic gray going on so it's not it's it's more on the brownie gray I guess not the bluey gray like we have with hints of gray um chance of rain and of course flint is definitely a blue gray this is more of a gray gray or you've got maybe more of a grayish brownish tint but not not overloading in the brown at all um it's got some great modeling in here um I did do a small start last night um I'm stitching this on 14 count our taupe 14 count taupe in the autumn series gotta get this right <laughs> um and that's just black coffee. Um, if you tune in to, I did a Floss Toss Friday for this. It is coming probably next week. It won't be this week um, because I am finishing up showing the uh, Spooky Series for that one. So look for Spooky Series this week. And then you're going to see, start seeing the Autumn Series Floss Toss Fridays. So Again, this is taupe. This color, let me show it by itself here. Oh, and I pulled all of my own colors for this and that'll be shared in the floss toss, the Friday floss toss. Um, so let me pull, this is taupe by itself with the no stitching on it. It's got the great modeling. Um, this is, like I said, going to be a great, just basic color for us. I think we have been needing this really, really bad. Um, I noticed that Little House Needleworks is coming out with Beach Boardwalk. I think this is gonna work, guys. Now, I haven't pulled the floss, uh, but just by looking at it, your teals, your pinks, your browns are all gonna work on here. Your white, you might need to brighten it just a smidge because it is a light taupe. It's not super dark. Um, you might need to brighten it maybe to a Snowball Classic Color Works, maybe a B5200. I'm not sure. I will let you guys know once I pull. I will pull those colors for you. Hopefully I have them in my stash. Um, I'll pull those colors um, and let you guys know. We can even do a Floss Toss Friday for that. But again, autumn series, uh, part of the sneak peek here is this is taupe. So I am loving this. This has so much potential for everything. Um, yeah. And eventually I may do like a regroup of just our basics. Um, just so we have maybe our neutrals put together, but that that is gonna be a long time from now, but I'm just kind of trying to think ahead because I'm trying, trying to add as many neutrals for us as possible. So, all right, so another sneak peek for 
uh, uh, the Autumn series is, I haven't quite gotten the name for this, but it's going to be denim. So, actually, no, I did come up with a name with it um, from my husband's family. Grandpa's overalls. This is what it is. Grandpa's overalls. His grandfather wore overalls all the time when he was farming. So, it's got the hash on here. Totally full denim look. Um, this is going to be great with your uh, stitching with the housewives. It's another, like I said last time in floss tube four, a great alternative for stitching on black. If you're not sure what you wanna do, um, this is a great alternative. It's dark, your whites are gonna show up, your oranges are gonna look good, your teals are gonna look good. You may need to switch some blues up. This would be a great patriotic color as well. You may need to switch some blues up, but that's okay. A light, a super light blue, um, or even a navy would look good on this. So this is Grandpa's Overalls um, Autumn Series. Gotta get that in my head. All right, next one. You know what? I'm just gonna show, show more than I intended because why not? We're here. Um, this next one I love, and I think it has a lot of, again, potential for a wide range of uh, fall stitching. Gosh, you could even go into summer with this guy. So this is fall feels. So it's got just a different gradient. You've got your reds, you've got your oranges, and reds go into the orange, and then you've got your greens going into almost like a tealy, greeny blue. But awesome color. Um, really, if you had a small stitch or, or if you got a 16 by 20, you could get like one good size stitch in the orangey red section. Or if you wanted to move it down and do this section in the bigger uh, size, even in this, if it was super small, you could do it. I mean, it just, the sky's the limit here. I think it's so cool. And it, it, does give you it that fall feeling. It's the fall colors just kind of melded together, super light again, because I want your colors to stand out and pop off of this. So fall feels. Then the next one, we haven't seen a lot of this out. I know there has been some, but I really wanted to try it and see what, what we thought. Um, this is, it's reading a little weird. On this light but this is mustard and it's got the modeling in here so you get your different intensity of this mustard color but yeah the light is reading this really weird let me stand back maybe I don't know but mustard I could totally see like black writing on here white's gonna pop off of it because it's still dark enough that your whites gonna, your whites are gonna show, your creams are gonna show, so just kind of a different color, mustard. All right, um, I'm gonna show you one more. This one's kind of an oddball, and I thought it was needed. Um, so let me t let let me know what you think. Um, I thought it was cool. We have, I am a hunting wife, meaning Keith goes to hunt. I just, you know, reap the benefits of the deer that come in, come in, you know. Um, and I know there's tons of you out there. Um, Keith, actually, my husband came up with, he, he suggested that I do this. And I thought, okay, strange, but let me see if it works. So he suggested a camo never been done before in cross-stitch fabric that I know of, not that I know of. Um, so yeah, I played around with the colors because I know you can do like a super traditional camo, but you know, words would look great on this, but I don't know how your, I don't know, a uh, Plum Street sampler 
pattern is going to look on that. So I printed this just to see what it was going to look like and how a traditional camo would look, you know. Very bold, very in your face. You probably, if you did take this outside, you wouldn't be able to see it because it's true camo. But I modified it a little bit and I drew those colors back and I hope you like it. I'm going to, I have, I ha actually have some patterns um, in mind to stitch on this. So this is the TDS version of camo. So again, muted colors. I did want the dark to kind of seep out there just a little bit, but not be so in your face, like camo, black, ah, let's smudge the eyes, like, let's go. But, um, so, um, this is just super subtle camo. Go back a little bit. Um, you can get lots of different colors on here. Um, yeah, I have definitely a, a Plum Street sampler pattern, um, that I want to stitch on this, that I actually had it in mind for it. And hopefully I can have that kitted up next time so I can show you. Um, but this is camo, TDS camo. <laughs> so, yep. Yeah. So that is, I've got, let's see, one. I have four other colors. Um, I'll hold those back um, so you guys can see them in the store reveal, which will be um, maybe not next week, but the week after. So probably the last week of June, we'll go live with um, the autumn series in the shop. And we're going to have Ada... 14, 16, 18, 20 count Ada, and then we're going to have uh, your 27 count Linda as well in the autumn series. Um, for fall, since it's they're more muted colors, I, I have not gone with an opalescent, um, but I think we've got plenty of opalescent as far as basics and stuff, that if you were going to have a fall stitch that you wanted to throw on, on the opalescent, we have some to cover for, for fall. Um, so very cool. Excited about this series. I hope you like it. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Um, all of them I really, really like, and I'll have some floss toss Fridays out for you, uh, with these, um, to give you more ideas, um, as far as what colors are going to work on these particular color, very, very unique colors that we're doing this time around. Um, but yeah, so that is it for the autumn series. Okay, so now we're going to announce the winners of last week's giveaway. Um, our three winners today are going to receive either a DMC floss label pack or a Cosmo floss label pack. They choose, it's up to them. Um, so let's get to it. Um, first winner is going to be Joyce Taunton. Second winner is Anne Apalschitz. I'm going to butcher that. I am so sorry. Um, Anne A-P-A-L-S-C-H. Alpsch. Alpsch. Um, and then our third winner is Amy Berry. So Joyce, Anne, and Amy, congratulations. Email me at contact at the digistitchery.com. I'll put the email um, in text down below in the description. Uh, email me. Uh, I need to know which one do you want, DMC or Cosmo. Um, also, your address so I can mail them to you. So, congratulations. And now we'll move on to this week's giveaway. And we're going to go back to fabric. We're going to go back to why we're here, right? So as far as fabric, I think this week we need to do, um, maybe for three winners, we'll do a uh, 10 by 12 
opalescent, I'm switching it up on you guys, an opalescent fabric of your choice. So the opalescent that we have in the basic series, uh, the summer fruit, and in the spooky series that we have out right now. So lots of opalescent choices that you could have. Um, so three winners. What I need you to do is U.S. residents only. I forgot to say that last time, but I did have it up here in the in the text. But um, yeah, U.S. residents only. I'm only shipping in the U.S. for right now. Like the video. Subscribe to my channel so you can stay in touch with all of these shop updates and apparently all of these projects I've been working on <laughs> or should be working on, I should say. Um, subscribe to the channel. Um, let's see. And I want you to comment. I want you to comment on your favorite. Tell me your favorite sneak peek today from the autumn series. So let me go over those really quick again. The camo. Mustard. Fall feels. Grandpa's overalls. And taupe. So tell me which one you like, which one's your favorite. Um, and also, I just got a Blackstone grill. If you have any like awesome Blackstone recipes, I know they're like super popular now. We got ours, they had some great deal at Lowe's a couple weeks ago. So we, we pulled the trigger and got one. So I need recipes. We've made breakfast, I've grilled chicken, brats, all that. Um, but if you guys have any like different recipes, send them my way. I'm always looking for uh, some new things to cook because we get tired of the same thing around here. So that is it. Um, thank you so much for tuning in and putting up with me through my whip parade. Um, I need to get to work. So I will let you guys go. Um, thank you again and stay tuned. Next floss tube, we are going to go over what we're all stitching for Christmas in July. Um, I will be participating. There are a lot, um, just a quick thing, follow Instagram. I'm sure they're announcing it on Facebook too, but make sure and follow what uh, your designers are doing, your favorite designers are doing for Christmas in July. Um, I know there's a lot of sew alongs that are happening. Um, I am looking into a couple to participate in myself. So one of them I'm going to participate in is the Como Stitches. Um, she is going to be stitching one of Erin Elizabeth's Christmas. It's a bunch of Christmas words, <laughs> subway writing kind of. Uh, go figure, you know, I'm addicted right now. Um, I'm going to be participating in that. I got to get my pattern together. I've got to get my fabric um, and my floss together for that one. Um, but I know Luminous Fiber Arts is hosting a so long and that looks really cute. I may have to sign on to that one too. Um, go check it out. She's got the floss series and she did like, uh, she, she's got a floss pack um, that you guys can get in on. And also she did a sneak peek of the mystery so long that she's doing. Um, gosh, I know there's probably going to be a ton more out there that, that are, that are doing it. So um, start planning. I'm starting to like think about that as well. Um, so like I said, next plus two, we're going to go over what I'll be doing. Um, fabric choices. We're going to pull from all the basics, really any fabric that we've got that the digi stitchery has that would look great with Christmas stitches. Um, we'll pull that and talk about it. So thank you again for joining and I will See you next time. Thank you.